Hello guys, today we'll have another code review, and this time a bit different. It will be a multiple code review from the group of my students I'm currently mentoring as a pet project in my local Lithuanian community. I got a few questions from you about mentoring in general, because I mentioned it on my videos, and you asked how can you participate in that program. So currently that program is closed and running and I don't accept anyone else, but stay tuned for spring news. So after the first cohort of testing my mentorship skills, maybe I will expand it internationally. We'll see. I'm not decided yet. So stay tuned and subscribe to this channel. Meanwhile, let's take a look how some of my students implemented file upload and specifically image upload in their projects. And these will be examples from the code that I won't even refactor mostly. I will just show you the different ways how you can approach different things related to file upload and image upload. So this video is more like code review with demonstration of various approaches. So there's no right or wrong here. I will just comment on some stuff that could be improved a bit. So the task is simple. There is a form to upload a book and one of those fields is a cover image. And in addition to just uploading the file, the task is to validate that it's an image, resize it properly so it would fit in the list of books, and take care that the file name is unique and wouldn't conflict with any other file names. Let's see topic by topic how different students approached it. First, let's talk about validation. And there are certain Laravel validation rules that you can apply to images. See here in this line, first you can validate that it's an image, and then you can choose the mimes of which extensions would you accept. For example, in your case, you may not accept GIFs or SVGs or something. And also you can specify max size of the files. In addition to that, I have an article, quite an old one, on my older Laravel daily blog, which I don't write to anymore because I switched to fully video production. But still, a lot of articles are relevant. And there are four rules that I mention here. For example, for images, you can specify dimensions or even ratio, that it should be three to two, and combine rules to have a few image validation rules in one. And also there's a problem that I see often is how you can upload bigger files, bigger than two megabytes. Because two megabytes, I think it's a default max file upload in PHP settings. And I have another article, and I will link that in the description of this video, link to all those articles. If you want to increase the max file size in Laravel, there are three places that you need to check. Laravel validation size, then your settings in PHP INI, and there are two places that you need to check, upload max file size and post max size, that's for all post requests. So you need to increase both of them and check that you're working with right PHP INI on right PHP version. And then there are settings for web server, whether you're using Nginx or Apache or something else, there could be max settings in those web servers. Otherwise, if you don't increase them, you will just get 413, request entity too large, and your code wouldn't even reach Laravel stage, it will throw error on the web server level. Okay, so we touched on validation. Next topic, how to randomize file names to make sure that if two different users upload the same file name like image.png, that it wouldn't conflict. And I will show you a few students' examples how they do that. Most of them, actually, I have a group of uh, 25 students who performed this task already. And most of them did it based on timestamp. So file name, they build the file name based on time and extension and maybe original file name, which is okay. Another example is this is a private method. So there is a file, then we have upload cover. And I like GitHub navigation for that, by the way. Again, cover name, user ID, time, and then extension. So then we are pretty sure that the file name is unique and won't conflict with others. But for this, I would have another advice. I really like separating files into folders. So each file has its own folder with its own thumbnails and resized images, which you can see on the screen, and we will get to that in a minute. So you will have something like public images books, then image ID, and then file name, which would be original file name. I really like to stay with the original file name. So whatever user uploaded picture.png, it will be picture.png when downloaded on the other end, instead of our own default image, which may be even insecure. If you put user ID in file name, then you expose user ID as a public file, which may be a security issue. Timestamp isn't, although it may also give too much information like when the file was uploaded. So I'm not a big fan of this decision. It works, it's an okay code, but I would preserve the original file name and put the file into a subfolder. 
To do that, of course, we need to have file identifier of some kind. And we don't because that field is inside of books table. And this is one of the reason I like to use a package called Spotty Media Library. And some of my students did use that. So a few examples of that. All you need to do in the controller if you have that package installed is add media from request and choose the media collection. And then it would create a new record in database table media and put the file book image into storage app public media ID, which is file ID and then subfolder. A different option is in this case, a student has a method on the model, which is fine. We have attach cover, which does add media from file to media collection. Pretty similar. If you want more information on how that package works, I will link to the documentation of that package in this video description. It's very popular, downloaded over 3 million times from what I remember, and I totally recommend it. And another reason why I recommend it, let's get to resizing of the image. As you may have seen, some students made resizing with image make and resize. And that image make, another example here, is a package called intervention image. This one. It's a package not for Laravel, it's for PHP, and it allows you to do a lot of manipulations with images like resize, colorize, contrast, and there are a lot of methods here on the left. Also, you can chain methods like in here, add watermarks, and a lot of stuff you can do with images. So you can use that package for manipulating the images, and that is fine. But if you want to do just resizing, in Laravel Media Library, there's a section called defining conversions. So you can define just in your model, you can define a conversion of width, height, sharpen, and there are a lot of other methods. Then name that conversion whatever you want, like a thumbnail, and it will resize the image automatically and put that copy of the resized image in the same folder that we've been talking about a minute ago. So you would have image ID as a folder, original file name, and all the thumbnails that you define here, which may be multiple thumbnails, like smaller, bigger, mobile, or something like that. So you get the resizing part as a part of that media library. And final thing here in this video, you need to have a no image image, like default or fallback image or no cover, whatever you call it, if someone doesn't upload the image. So how to set that up? There are a few places in the code that you can do that. And I'll show you one example. So one student uploads the cover and doesn't really care if it doesn't exist. So if request file is existing, so let's scroll back to here. So store, if request has file, we upload it. Otherwise cover is null in the database. And then in the index blade or show blade or wherever that book is shown, this is the code. So if book cover exists, and what is that? I will show you in a second. Then we load the cover. Otherwise, we show no cover default image. And that book cover exists is an accessor on the model of book. If we go to the model book, there's a get cover exist attribute method, which checks two things. If the file is not empty in the database, and if file actually exists in the file system. And what I would do here is extend that attribute to return not true or false, but return the actual file name. So this could be a return of that function. And then instead of doing that if statement or ternary operator wherever you need, so an index of the book, show of the book, whatever you need, you would just return book cover image and then attribute name would be get cover image attribute or something like that. So to use an accessor here is a good practice, but I would extend it a bit step further. Another approach to do that, you can see it here. So set default image at the moment when the image is uploaded. So if you have a picture you upload and then you have the new file name randomized by time. Otherwise you set the file name to default PNG. And then whenever you need that image, you don't have any if statements or accessors or whatever, you just load the file name from the database. It probably is a better in terms of performance. It may be misleading because if someone looks at the database and sees the image, it may be misleading and misunderstood that the image was actually uploaded where it wasn't. And another problem may arise if you have conflicting file names. So what if someone actually uploads the file with default PNG? You have to be careful randomizing that. But in general, I quite like this approach of setting the data whenever it is set and not checking every time when you want to get that data. So these are my quick tips and comments around the code about file uploads from my students. 
if you want to get more code reviews like this one and follow whenever I may open mentorship internationally, the best way to do that is subscribe to my newsletter, which I send every Thursday with uh, Laravel articles and tips that I find over that week, including links to my own videos, my own tweets, and whenever I launch something new. And also as a newsletter subscriber, you get 20% discount for all of my courses. So maybe that would be incentive for you. So join 5,000 subscribers and subscribe to that newsletter and see you guys in another video.